Now we come to a real highlight in our program. Every year, the regional president of Phi Theta Kappa addresses our annual convention. It's always such a thrill to hear from these young leaders and to share in their enthusiasm. Please welcome this year Phi Theta Kappa president from El Centro College, C.D. Allen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, am uh, very grateful to be here, and I do appreci uh, appreciate your uh, hosting me here to just give you a little talk from a college student's perspective about uh, what's happening in today. Uh, I do want to recognize some of the colleagues that I have in the audience with me. Uh, my Phi Theta Kappa chapter advisor, Mr. Ronald Smith, is here with me. My Phi Theta Kappa regional comptroller, Mr. Dwayne, Dr. Dwayne Hood. And uh, I have a few others with me. Mike Navarro, my regional uh, fellow regional officer, is here, along with a few other people that I recognize in the audience. Th thank you all for being here, here tonight. I uh, do want to note a slight deviation in my talk tonight. Originally, I was going to give a talk about uh, really the uh, second chance that some of our uh, people are afforded with the community college education to move forward in life as opposed to other countries and some of the privileges that we have here in the United States. But I did want to talk about something that's sort of been irking at me for the last few months. And it's been happening over uh, just a few months of, uh, with my travels and with all the conferences that I attend and meetings like this. And it's related to some of the issues that are affecting students and instructors alike. Uh, as a student representative of the, the largest honor society for two-year colleges, I have the pleasure of just traveling all over the United States and talking with thousands of students and hundreds of instructors. And one thing I hear from students is uh, they really don't know what to do with their life. They're in community college because they feel as though they need to get an education, but they don't really know what their calling is. They don't really know what specific job that they're supposed to be uh, uh, leaping for. And the instructors, what I hear from them is uh, some of their students are not motivated or they, they're sort of banging their heads on the wall and not really getting through to some people that in their classes that appear to be just a little bit uh, not really in sync with what's going on in the classrooms. And I've just sort of observed all the conversations that I've had with people and students and instructors and I think I've come to what may be one of the reasons that students are not engaged in the classroom, and then again, why students feel as though that their future is bleak, they don't really know what to do, and things like that. So through my own personal investigation of these matters, I've discovered that there's a common denominator to these things. There's a shared link, and I simply want to share with you some contrarian advice, uh, things that you may not have heard before, uh, some things that you may have heard before, but I think that would be helpful in the future to give some students some practical, pragmatic ways to addressing their futures, and then also some of the instructors that they have with their students. Uh, it's clear to me that some of the professionals in the industry, in the education industry, have backed up some of the things that I, well, most of the things that I'm going to say here today with research. But again, I want to just make sure these things are practical and that we introduce these things to students. Uh, Fight Theta Kappa has released its new honor study topic entitled The Culture of Competition. And it deals with uh, sort of the contemporary social and political and economic issues related to global competition. And it's a topic that we'll be discussing and uh, hosting for the next two years throughout meetings like this. And, different publications that we have, and I think it's a very timely introduction to really what's going on. So, so a little bit of the national uh, conversation that, I, that we're having here with the nation's place in the world and things such as this. Uh, late last year, Thomas Friedman of the New York Times, who just co-authored a book entitled That Used to Be Us, How America Fell Behind in the World That He Invented and How We Can Come Back, uh, was interviewed by CNN's Piers Morgan about his book, and he decided to cover some of the same issues that are covered in the book and some of the issues that I'm talking about here tonight. 
And he responded by saying, the age of average is over. You should aim to be an artisan. Everything you do, you should be proud of, willing to put your initials on it. And the takeaway that I gathered from this interview was that instead of focusing on what the world can offer you, we should be focusing on what we can individually offer the world. Friedman's description of a hyper-competitive, globalized economy is where we're one individuals, like our community colleges and my peers, should forget about this idea of finding your passion, following your dreams, and things like that. And this is precisely what David Brooks, another American, great American writer and speaker, uh, expressed in a June 2011 column in the New York Times entitled, It's Not About You, saying that most successful young people don't look inside and then plan a life. They look outside and find a problem, which summons their life. Most people don't form a self and then lead a life, but of course, as they age, they'll discover that the task of a life are at the center. Life comes to a point only in those moments when the life dissolves into some task. The purpose in life is not to find yourself, it's to lose yourself. I remember that uh, Zig Ziglar is famously quoted for saying that you can get anything out of life if you help enough other people get exactly what they want. And this is the lesson that students, my peers, desperately need to learn that it's not about them, but it's about the people around them. It's about the wants and desires of the people that they will ultimately serve in this life experience. In fact, a recent uh, conference board survey of job satisfaction found that 64% of workers under 25 say that they're unhappy in their jobs, and that this would suggest that following your passion is not a magic formula when it comes to attaining a satisfying career. And I would argue here tonight that perhaps the exhausted mantra of following your passion and following your dreams is really expiring and it's not really useful anymore. I view this advice as unpractical and unrealistic, given the false motivation to students, and it leaves instructors literally and metaphorically banging their heads against a wall. What is worse is the response by some instructors, quoting the old adage that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, but Really, we should consider the context of advice is that if the advice is not useful to begin with, then there's no point in using it. I would argue that we should drop these various mantras and instead focus our energies on showing students that in order to build a remarkable life, a satisfying career, one where they can live the experience of a satisfying life, as a contributing member of society, that they must begin by mastering a rare and valuable skill. It starts with mastery. They begin with exploring their interests, and community colleges are very good at that. It is, community colleges provide the affordability to explore your interests, regardless of what age you are. The smaller class sizes, the uh, smaller tuition, all these things I think that are superior competitive advantages over traditional four-year colleges that I think that we really need to hone in into. Not to mention that community colleges offer what's what I call a midway credential, which is the associate's degree. And so in addition to gaining the interest and gaining some traction with whatever it is that community college students are interested in, that you have the option, you have the ability to put and earn a credential to seal that and prove that you've made some kind of headway with your interests. Now, contrary to popular belief, satisfaction in one's career or life will not happen because of the money that they make or the wonderful things that they buy or even because they've acquired a college diploma but rather with the realization of the value that they bring to other people through a mastered skill. I'm aware that this society can constantly focuses on materialism, but mastery, in my opinion, is the foundation for success. And so whether we're talking about Bill Gates and whether we're talking about Steve Jobs, Tiger Woods, or any of the athletes or people that we quote in uh, uh, popular uh, opinion here today, value is only created through mastery of a rare and valuable skill. We must begin to drive that home, that anything in life is not worth pursuing unless you've mastered something. And this was very uh, uh, 
this became aware in 19, 1867, perhaps, with John Stuart Mill when he was speaking to a group of university students at St. Andrews. And he basically told them that we're not here just to make you skillful lawyers or doctors or engineers, but you're here because we're putting you through a process. We're here to make you a capable and cultivated human being. And I think that's what this is all about. I'm asking for your help as instructors to help resolve what I think has been years of damage from broadcasted lackluster advice that's impractical, one-liner rhetoric that goes nowhere. I need your help in spreading this contrarian view that only mastery of skills can offer students the promise of an engaging, satisfying life after education. And as for some of you, you can help address the concerns of why your students are unmotivated in your classes. That I think this will provide some of the answers that they're looking for. This will actually help provide uh, some of the inspiration that I think that some of the students need, something practical that they can actually use. Appreciation for the process of one, one's education and the process of their mastery of valuable skills is where a true satisfaction of life comes from, and not necessarily from the things that sometimes follow those processes. Thank you very much for this talk. I uh, do appreciate it. Thank you so much.